how many have decreed America shall be saved? Yeah. Do you know that's a decree? Yeah. That's a decree that flies in the face of what the enemy's decreeing. And if we can just get every believer to say America shall be saved, God send, God send revival. God send revival. I'm telling you, we'll see this nation turn around. Because God never saved by many. He always saved by few. So my deep dive into this passage actually started seven years ago. Esther chapter 8. And I was walking back and forth. It was the beginning of 2015. How many know seven is the number of completion, perfection, covenant? Seven years now. And the Lord took me back to this passage seven years later. And he said, for this year, this, this season of time. Because the Lord said, I'm getting ready to bring my people and this nation into divine reversal. Wow. Everybody say divine reversal. That's when God turns it around. Because in Esther chapter 9, verse 1, it actually says, On the very day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, the reverse occurred. And instead, God's people had power over those that hated them. That's a turnaround. Okay? But let me tell you what happened that day. I, I, was stu- I began to study this out, divine reversal. And I went out and I shared it with my husband. I said, honey, the Lord's decreeing. It's a time of divine reversal for his church, a time of divine reversal for his people and for this nation. And so we celebrated. And about two hours later, we realized that on a personal level, we needed that word. How many have ever gotten a word for something that you thought it was for everybody else and it ended up being for you? So on that day... The Lord was saying, you, you're going to need this word. And so what happened was um, uh, Pastor Apostle Peter was telling the story about our son. Well, our son grew up healthy and strong, had three sons. His third son was born with a genetic defect. He was missing 26 genes on his G- DNA strand. Um, it's been quite the process. Um, I don't have t- time to tell you all the stories, but I will tell you this. He was almost two years old when he was very, very apparently in terrible pain. He was screaming for about 20 hours a day. It was horrible, horrible. And um, they took him to the specialist, and the specialist diagnosed him with four different heart conditions um, and a brain compression where his brain and his skull were, were compressed. And the doctor said, we need to go in right away and alleviate that compression or it can kill him. Or if it doesn't kill him, it can affect him in all these different ways. And he gave a list. He said, however, one of these heart conditions makes it impossible for us to anesthetize him. So obviously, we can't do a brain surgery with no anesthesia. So we're going to have to wait for six months to see if anything changes. And during that time, his life is in jeopardy. Stinking devil. You know, I mean, it's one thing to get up in pulpit and preach on this stuff. It's another thing to have to live this stuff, okay? And so... Um, So they came home, and about two months later, on the day that the Lord said to me, divine reversal, we get a call from our son. And he said, Mom, remember how the doctor said these things could happen? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, this morning when Lucas woke up, he couldn't move his left leg. And the doctor said this could be one of the things that could happen. He, He couldn't walk. He couldn't crawl. He was dragging his leg behind him on the floor. And so we called the doctor, and the doctor said, remember, I explained to you that some of these things could happen. And I hate to have to tell you this, but that issue is now irreversible. Listen to what the doctor said. On the very day that God said divine reversal, they get a diagnosis that says irreversible. Can you hear the difference between the voice of God and the voice of the enemy? Whose report are we going to believe? And so we brought little Lucas over to our house. We laid hands on him, and we decreed the word of the Lord. Let me tell you, how many here have some prophecies, some things that God has spoken to you? Do you realize that prophecy is not just supposed to be on your iPad or on your phone that you can casually listen to sometime or written up and printed in a nice, sweet little notebook that you glance at every now and then? No, these prophecies have been given so that we can war a warfare with the prophecies that have gone before us. Amen? And so we had to take that prophetic word and war with it over our grandson. I want you to know something. We decreed divine reversal. And the day we decreed it, nothing happened. The second day, he got worse. 
but the third day. The third day. Little Lucas jumped out of bed, started running all over the house, completely healed, completely restored. I'm telling you, we serve a God that brings divine reversals. And when man says it's impossible and says it's irreversible, I'm telling you, we serve a God that says I'm the God of divine reversals. And there is nothing that he cannot turn around. Amen? Let me tell you about Lucas because we're talking about a boomerang season. Everybody say boomerang. boomerang. So the condition that my grandson has is it's a condition called Williams syndrome. And many children that have Williams syndrome usually don't walk till they're three or four, very, very slow in development. Most of them never run because they don't have the core strength or the fine motor skills. I want you to know out of all seven of my grandchildren, Lucas is absolutely the fastest of all seven of our grandchildren. He won the 100-meter dash, the 50-meter dash, the shot put. I mean, he is, he is the fastest of our grandkids. Oh, and those heart conditions? When he was seven years old, we went for his annual um, heart scan, and we sent all of his stuff to the expert cardiologist in Williams Syndrome, and he said, listen, I've gone over his charts. I see that all these conditions have been there. He said, but for some unexplainable reason, it seems like every single one of these issues has resolved, and he is no longer in danger in his heart. Come on, guys. We serve a God of divine reversal. We serve a God of miracles, of healings, of turnarounds, and I'm telling you, if he'll do it for us, he'll do it for you. So we need to start elevating our faith. We need to start telling these stories. We need to start believing what we believe we believe. Turn to somebody and tell them, there are reversals coming for you.